you're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. Your next stop... Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to A Word from the Lord. James over here with you and glad you are back with us. We are uh, coming to you live and we hope that you are ready for study for God's Word. I uh, want to say before we get started and remind you about our tent meeting. We'll be making some uh, announcements about that momentarily, but uh, we do hope that you're planning on coming out and visiting with us uh, for the tent being at the Eden Fairgrounds. And uh, we're looking far forward to, to meeting you there. Our contact information uh, for you, if you'd like to uh, uh, contact us, uh, my name is my, my number is 276-340-2653, wordandlord at gmail.com is how you can reach me. Uh, we meet at 250 The Boulevard in Eden, and our Bible studies are Sundays at 9 a.m., Thursdays at 7 p.m., our worship is 10 a.m. on Sunday, and of course then a word from the Lord here on uh, uh, this channel, Star News, uh, at, uh, at what time is it, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock on Thursday night. So. Uh, friends, hope you will take advantage of that and uh, come out and study with us. If you're in the Eden area, we'd like to see you in the Martinsville area, 823 Starling Avenue, 120 American Legion in Danville. Uh, the brethren are uh, working on getting something going in Alta Vista as well. So, you know, we're the kind of people that uh, want to study the Bible. And if you want to study the Bible, we're the people that that uh, we hope you will be looking for because we're looking for you. If you're willing to study the Bible, we're really looking forward to meeting you. As I said, want to uh, remind you of our tent meeting. It's going to be at the Eden Fairgrounds, uh, September the 14th. That starts Monday. And, uh, uh, you know, it goes through the 25th. That's the next Friday. So 12 days of gospel preaching of the tent. And I believe we're going to have some pretty good weather. Uh, I know, as Mark says, we put in the order for it. And, uh, you know, we've, uh, uh, typically we had good, we have good weather. And so the Lord blesses us with some nice weather this time of the year. And so we hope you come out and visit with us, friends. It's, it's just uh, a joy to meet individuals who come out. And it's just plain, simple Bible teaching. No collections. We never take up your money. We t take your money. We never ask for your money. We want, we want you to just come out and feel, feel welcome, feel like a friend, and, <clears throat> and study the Bible with us. And, of course, as the sign says, no no collections and questions are welcome. And or as we say in the past, you know, br bring your Bible and leave your billfold because uh, we, we don't want your money. But if you are looking for a place to study the Bible, friends, the, the tent meeting is an excellent time and an excellent opportunity to do that. And we hope that you will take advantage of that. I know many people watch the program. Many people uh, have already called and uh, been asking about the tent. When's the tent going up? Where's it going to be? And so hope that you uh, are one of those individuals who's looking forward to it because we're looking forward to meeting you and, and uh, seeing you out at the tent, the Eden Fairgrounds, September 14th through the 25th. Now, having said that, let me uh, just go into our lesson because that's really what it has to do with. We ha this is a lesson that has to do with why you should come out and visit with us. Uh, Friends, we, all the time we get questions uh, about why we do certain things or how we do certain things. People don't understand what we do. They don't understand certain things that we teach because it's so foreign to them because of what they've heard. And uh, we get questions all the time about, you know, well, well how is it, you know, wh what about your worship? What, what do you do here? Uh, matter of fact, just the other day uh, I was talking to a friend and uh, the, uh, he was reading uh, the, the Eden Journal, Eden Zone Journal. We have a big ad in the Eden Zone Journal. If you haven't uh, picked up a copy of the Eden Zone Journal, the September edition, please pick it up. Our ad is in there. It's a nice, big, big, uh, uh, full-color ad. Really, it's like the picture that we have been uh, uh, advertising here. <clears throat> it's in the Eden Zone Journal. And, uh, you know, he was, he was looking at it, and he was looking at the, at the uh, uh, announcement there. And... Uh, uh, he, he, was, he was reading this part down here where it says, you know, no collections. And he said, you know, he said, well, I got a question. He said, so y'all don't take up any money? And I said, no. No, we don't. He said, well, well how, 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 do you, how do you put this on? How, you know, how, how do you cover all the expenses, whatever? I said, well, we take up money on the first day of the week, just like the Bible says. You know, on the first day of the week, uh, the Bible tells us as Christians that we are to uh, lay by in store, you know, we have commands on how to provide 
uh, how to provide for uh, the work of the church. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2, now concerning the collection for the saints, even as I have given order to the church of Galatia, even so do ye. All right? Upon the first day of the week, get, get it over a week and I'll read it here. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him that there be no gatherings when I come. Now, this particular occasion, it was for the collection of the saints, or a collection for the needy uh, uh, in Jerusalem, but that was a work of the church. So that by the same principle, anything the church is going to do, this is the example of it. So if the church is going to be involved in a work, evangelism, like the tent meeting, uh, if it's got a benevolent work going on, uh, an evangelistic work or, or an edification work, something like of that effect, then guess what? How do you fund it? Well, upon the first day of the week when all the saints are gathered together, that's when you lay by in store and you purpose to, to meet that need by laying by in store. 2 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 7. Here we have again, Paul said, Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. So, brethren, members of the Lord's church, lay by and store up on the first day of the week. So, how do we fund? How do we fund or how do we finance uh, meetings like, like, the, like the tent meeting that we're, we're discussing here, which is what he wanted to know? I said, well, the same way, the way that, that God said we should do it, and that is by laying by and store up on the first day of the week. So, do we take collection in the tent? No. We never passed a plate, never passed a bucket. We just lay by and store, and that's how we do that. And so, you know, I, I think that's kind of a curiosity sometimes. It's, it's sort of, uh, you know, I, I don't understand that because maybe, well, I know <clears throat> uh, where, where he attends. I, I'm pretty sure they pass the plate every time the doors are open. And so when people get back to doing what the Bible says, it's foreign to them. And so it's like, well, that's kind of strange that y'all don't do this. Well, to us, it's strange that you do do something because it's not in the Bible. So uh, it's strange to us that people would, would uh, be willing to, to give their money every time the doors are open, every time they assemble together, when the Bible clearly says upon the first day of the week is when you lay by in store. That's what's strange to us is that you don't do it that way. So in, in any way, but it was an opportunity to, to give a Bible answer. And so when people are asking us questions, you know, how do you do certain things? One of, the, one of the easiest things to say is what the Bible says, and that is, well, if that really doesn't clear it up for you, why don't you come out and see? Now, friends, I want you to consider that in the Bible, in the Bible, it is definitely the case that people were told to come and see in order to give an answer or to understand better what, uh, what they're asking about. Look, for example, uh, in first, in, in John 1, not 1 John, but John 1, John chapter 1 and verse 39. John 1 and verse 39. I want you to notice that on this occasion, Jesus is uh, being questioned by some disciples. Let's just look at the text here. John 1 verse 39. Uh, Jesus has been uh, announced by John. John the Baptist is, is saying, Behold the Lamb of God. And uh, let's back up to verse uh, 37. And the two disciples heard him speak. They said, I heard John speak. <clears throat> and they followed Jesus. John said, uh, Behold the Lamb of God. And so the two disciples started following Jesus. Now notice this. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and said unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which that is to say, being interpreted Master, where dwelleth thou? You know, where, where dwellest thou? And so uh, they want to know well, where you stay, where you're living. And he said to them, come and see. And they came and saw where he dwelt. Now, here's the point I want to make to this. Friends, the reason why we would say to you, come and see, and the reason why we want you to come out and see, uh, see us at the tent or come to the tent is really to help you understand the answers that we're giving you from the Bible. In other words, it may be difficult for people to understand some things because they, they can't grasp it, they can't visualize it. You know, sometimes when uh, someone's describing maybe where they live or where they went and all you have to go on is, is pictures that you already have in your mind. 
And so when you actually see the real thing, then you go, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's totally different than what I imagined. So we're saying to you, if you really want to know, if you're really seeking, you know, like Jesus said, what seek you? If you're really seeking to know about the church of Christ and how we do things and what we teach and what we practice and so forth, then why don't you just come and see? Why don't you come and see? You know, these disciples ask Jesus a question, but it's more than that. They ask him a question after he asked them one. What are you looking for? Now, I want, to, I want you to know, friends, we're really trying to be like Christ in this matter. And Jesus was very gracious. He, re he really invited his, uh, uh, the disciples there to ask me questions. He said, ask me questions. You know, what, what, are, you, what are you wanting? T tell, me, tell me what you're thinking about. And so they asked me a question. That's the kind of people we strive to be. We try, strive to be individuals who invite and encourage people to ask questions of us. You know, if you want to know well, why do you practice what you do and so forth, that's, that's what we want you to know. We, we want you to know that, that we are, are like Jesus in that regard. You know, because I know there are some things you don't understand based upon what you've been taught, based upon what you practice, and maybe you'd like to have more questions about it. The lady that called in on Mark's program, you know, she was like, can I stand out in the rain and just get good and saturated and be baptized? Well, see, there's a fundamental problem here. You don't understand what baptism is. Baptism is not simply getting wet. Baptism is an immersion. It's a burial. And so sometimes, you know, you need some more teaching, some more instruction on that. Well, the tent's a good place to get it. If you have more questions about that, come and see. See, come and see what, what we're talking about. That's what Jesus did. He invited people. And he was very open and willing to people to come and, and discuss with him. And Friends, really it ought to be the case that people, men, preachers, pastors, bishop, rabbi, who it may be, if they're in the business of instructing people and giving them a, a word from the Lord, if they're in the business of telling people what the Bible says, then they ought to be willing to, to uh, be approached with, with questions about their salvation. Right? If you have a question about your salvation, about what the Bible says about salvation, hey, you know, this, this is what we're talking about. But I find it very interesting that when uh, other preachers, uh, people in these denominations, when they are approached, they don't have that same open graciousness invitation that you see our Lord having and that we strive to have. Now, you say, well, well James, can you prove that? I can definitely prove that. I can show you that. Let me just demonstrate. This is a, a Baptist uh, tent meeting, and I believe it was in uh, Bassett. Correct me if I'm wrong there, Mark. But um, uh, I want you to listen to what, what was said. And I, you've probably heard this before, but listen how, how the, the question was, was uh, uh, responded to when they were asked about salvation. You are welcome. Thank you all for backing up. Meeting. What can I do for you, sir? I don't believe that you are very clear on the plan of salvation. I just wonder if you could explain the plan of salvation. Nah, I don't. I don't take any views. But bless your heart. Have a good night. Appreciate you. I don't take any views. You're not to I, I know what you're here for, brother. Bless you. Yeah. Y'all fellas, go ahead and leave me. Appreciate it. Thank you. That's right. So he's not concerned about people's souls? I mean, suppose this gentleman here. What I just asked you to do, sir, I asked you to leave. Leave the piece of property right now. And if you don't leave, I'll ask you to be removed. Well, I accept you. Uh-huh. We asked you to serve this asset, but then just be removed. No, can you believe that? I, I don't do interviews. Can you imagine Jesus, the disciple, saying, he turns around and says, you know, what, what you want? What can I do for you? That's what the man said. What can I do for you? And the, and the disciples ask Jesus a question. And, and this man goes, and Jesus says, no, nah, I don't do interviews. Sorry, y'all going back to wherever you, want, wherever, you, wherever you came from. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine Jesus going, nah, I don't do interviews. Nah, I don't do interviews. Go on, bless your heart. Really? Really? You're asking about salvation, and he goes, no, nah, you know, go on. And the guy says, you need to leave. Now, 
friends, is that really, is that really the kind of uh, uh, atmosphere, environment you want to be in? Now, that is not what you'll find at our tent. You know, you won't find individuals that are, that are saying, no, nah, we ain't got time for your question. As a matter of fact, you'll find just the opposite of that. You'll find individuals that are saying, you know, we welcome those questions. You got a question about salvation, about the church, about, you know, about what a person must do to, uh, to be saved, or how to get to heaven. Look, th this is the opportunity. And if you think that, you know, if you think, well, I don't know that um, uh, that's really the kind of, of people y'all are. I've heard about you guys. Well, I want you to consider somebody else then. I want you to consider somebody else. Here's Philip. Philip and Nathaniel. Now, if we come back to, to our Bible in John, uh, John chapter 1, and we're looking about verse 43. Now, notice Jesus finds uh, Philip and calls him. He finds Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and, P and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Now watch verse 46. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. Now, I want you to think about this, because I know there's probably a lot of people, there's a lot of people that are, that are out there watching, and what they're, what they're thinking is they're thinking, you know what? I don't know if I really want to go out there to be with the folks in the Church of Christ because I, I just don't know that they're really the kind of people I want to be around. I don't know if they're really good people, you know. Now, Nathaniel was cautious. He was cautious. Now, I don't blame him. I think it's good to be cautious. It's good to be cautious because the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 21, 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 21, look what he says. He says, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. So it is right to be cautious. Someone says, come out to the tent. You know, the, 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 the uh, members of the Church of Christ, they have their tent set up down at the Eden Mall, and you might be saying, well, you know, I don't know about that. Any, any good coming out of the Church of Christ? Well, you know what? We're saying like Philip, come and see. You know, it's okay to be cautious because the Bible says uh, that uh, in 1 John 1 John 4 and verse 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are going out into the world. <clears throat> so it, it's okay to be cautious. Nathaniel was cautious. And he said, you know, I, I don't know that I've heard much good uh, coming out of, um, uh, of Nazareth or Galilee, so I, I don't know if really what you're saying, Philip, if I should trust it. Well, you know what, Philip... Is, is, is smart to encourage Nathaniel, just come and see. And here's why. You know, I think Nathaniel, being raised up where in, in the environment that he was, Galilee was, was despised. Nazareth was despised in Galilee. You know, that, Nazareth was like the, the worst of the worst. And here's Nathaniel going, I, I just hadn't heard much good come out of, out of, out of uh, Galilee. I haven't heard much good come out of Nazareth. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? And so what he's heard, he's, he's, he's kind of biased about what he's heard. Now, you, friends, you may, have, you may have heard from your preacher that the church of Christ is a cult. You know, you may have heard from your preacher, you, you know, they'll, they'll get you all mixed up. You need to stay away from there. You may have heard from your preacher uh, if you go down to the to the uh, uh, the tent or have Bible studies uh, with the Church of Christ when you're supposed to be uh, at His church, you know He'd shoot you. I mean, we've heard preachers say that. Well, I'm just saying to you, well, well, come and see, come and see if what you've heard about the Church of Christ is really true. What what we're saying is, come and see. Sit in our midst. You know, sit in our midst. Just see for yourselves. See if, if what you've been told is really true. See if it's a far cry or see if it's a far cry from what, what the truth really is. You know, in, in 1 Kings chapter 10 and verse 7, 1 Kings 10 and verse 7, we meet the, uh, uh, the queen of Sheba. And she comes to talk to Solomon. And when the queen of Sheba heard the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. You know what? Bring your hard questions. Bring your questions. Now notice this. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train and camels that bear spices and very much gold, precious stones. And when she was come, uh, 
And when she was come to uh, Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all of Solomon's wisdom in the house that he had built and the meat of his table and the sitting of his servants and the attendance of his ministers and their apparel and his cupbearers and his ascent by which he went up to the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And she said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in my own country, in my own land, of thine acts and thy wisdom. Howbeit I believed not the words until I came, and mine eyes had seen it, and behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceeds the fame which I heard. Now, I, I'm, I'm suspecting, friends, that you haven't heard good things like the Queen of Sheba and are going to say, you know what, the half hadn't been told. You, you've heard a lot of bad things about about the Lord's church. You've heard a lot of bad things about the Lord's church, but I'm telling you, friends, why don't you just come and see? Just see if what you've heard is true or if it's been a far cry from what's been told. See if, in fact, that we are, uh, see if, in fact, we're, we are what people say are that, uh, that, that we are, or are we totally different? I, su I suspect that talking to most people, You'd get a bad report about us. Well, just come and see. All we're saying is come and see. The tent's a good opportunity for you to come and see. You know, you might say, well, I'm doubtful. I I'm doubtful about what we teach. Well, be cautious. That's okay. Being cautious is okay, but uh, just come out and see. That's all we're saying. Come out and see. Now, you might be saying, well, James, uh, Okay, I might come out and see, but I'm just not really sure if I, if I want to or not. Okay, that's fine. Well, let me uh, say to you from another passage in the Bible. In 2 Kings chapter 7 and verse 14, 2 Kings 7 and verse 14, here we have the king saying, go and see. Now, it may be that you're, you're doubtful about what you've heard. And maybe you're doubtful about what you hear from me. And so you might say, you know what, I don't want to go, but I do want to find out some more information about it. Well, you might get someone else to go. Now look at this. In 2 Kings 7 and verse 14, 2 Kings uh, 7, and we're just going to start in, in chapter 7. Uh, the context is Samaria is under siege by the Syrians. And boy, they're hungry. I mean, they're starving. There's not much food in, in, the, in the city at all. And so uh, uh, we find four lepers sitting outside the city in, in, in verse 3. And uh, they said, why don't we sit here until we die? They said, if we go in the city, there's famine in the city. I'm paraphrasing this. If we go in the city, there's famine there, so we'll die there. If we sit here, well, there's no food here, so we're going to die. So why don't we just go to the Syrians? Why don't we just go to the camp of the Syrians and let us fall into them because here's what's going to happen. If we go to them, they may take us in. They may feed us. They may care for us. Or they might kill us. But you know what? <laughs> Our other two options are going to be death or death or maybe death. Well, let's take the maybe death. So they go out to the Syrian camp. All right, they go to the Syrian camp. When they come to the Syrian camp, there wasn't anybody there. And the Bible says, For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and the noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of, Samar uh, the king of Israel hath hired against us the, Hittite, the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. And so they said, uh, Let us, wherefore they rose and fled in the twilight and left their tents, their horses, their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. And so here comes these, these lepers. And so these lepers come into the uttermost part of the camp, and they don't see anybody. And they go into one tent, and they eat, and they drink, and they find some, they find some gold and silver and some raiment, and they go out and they bury it and they hide it. And they go to the next tent, they do the same thing. And then it dawns on them, they say, you know what, we do not well. This is verse eight, 9. We do not well, this day is a good uh, uh, day of good tidings. We hold, if, we hold our, if we hold our peace, if, if we tarry till morning, some mischief will come upon us. So let's go and tell the king. So they go and tell the king. They go tell the porter, hey, look, 
The Syrians have all gone. It's just spoiled out there. We need to go, to, we need to go spoil the Syrian camp. Well, the porter goes and tells the king. The porter goes and tells the king. And notice what the king says in verse 12. And the king arose in the night and said unto his servants, I will now show you what the Syrians have done to us. They know we'll be hungry. Therefore, therefore are they gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, when they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get into the city. And one of his servants, in verse 13, one of his servants answered and said, unto, answered and said Let some take, I pray thee, five of the horses that remain, which are left in the city. Behold, they are as all the multitude of Israel that are left in it. Behold, I say, they are even as all the multitude of the Israelites that are consumed. And let us sin and see. All right, so the horses, not, they're not much horses, you know. I mean, they're, the horses don't have anything to eat either. And, Probably they're down to the last five, the horses to eat or whatever. They've probably been eating them. So they said, let's send out these horses and let's just go and search out and see if what's being said is true. All right, well, they took their, therefore, two uh, chariot horses and the king sent after the host of the Syrians saying, go and see. And they went and after them unto Jordan and lo, all the way was full of garments and vessels which the Syrians had cast away in their haste. And the messengers returned and told the king, and the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians. And a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel and two measures of barley uh, for a shekel according to the word of the Lord. So the king says, well, I'm kind of cautious. I'm kind of afraid, so I'm going to go and see. I'm going to send somebody out to go back and give me a good report. Friends, I don't have a problem with that. As a matter of fact, send your friends. Send somebody you trust. It, it's very wise to go and just, hey, let's, let's, let's get a report. Let's go and find out what it is that's being said. You know, check it out before you believe it. That's good. In Acts 28 and verse 17, I want you to notice this. Acts 28 and verse 17, here you have Paul. Now, Paul's in prison, and uh, some of the chief Jews are going to come talk to him. He, he's, in, he's, in, uh, 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 he's in prison, and it came to pass after, after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together, and when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed no, uh, nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet I was delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they have, had examined me, would have let me go because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I had ought to accuse my nation of, for this cause, therefore, I have called for you to see you and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. Now notice what they said. And they said unto him, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came uh, showed or spake any harm of thee. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest, for as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. Now, these folks said, you know what? Uh, we we want to hear it. We want to we make sure that what we've been hearing is true. Well, friends, I, I'm saying that's pretty smart. And so I hope that if you, if you won't come and see, I mean, that's our, our appeal to you, come and see, then maybe you will go and see. Maybe you will send somebody and say, go and see, go and see what's happening. Go and see what it's like under the tent. You know, I know, friends, that the majority of you who watch this program have not been to our tents. And we've had the tents up in this area. I don't know how many, time, how many times the gospel tent has gone, has gone up in, in, in the areas uh, surrounding here. I know we have it, we've had it in Pelham once. We've had a, put a tent up in Mayadan. The tent's been up at the Eden Mall I know in 2007, it's been there 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. Last year it was down here in, Reed, in, in Reedsville off of Harrison Crossroad Loop. And now we're at the, Eden, at the uh, Eden Fairground. And so, I mean, not, that's not counting the times it's been in uh, the tents going up in Danville and in, the, in Martinsville and Bassett and, you know, all over the place. And most of you who are watching, I know, haven't come out to the tent. And yet you, you watch our program, you tell us how much you like our program, but you haven't come out, and I'm saying, why not? 
You know, if you're still speculating, well, well go and see. Send, send somebody. Send somebody. If you, if you want to find out what, what it's like under the tent, you know what? There's, there's a way that you can get some reports back, find out what it's like. You know what? We have uh, uh, bukus of video online of our tent meetings. We can give, we'll give you copies of tent meetings. Uh, you know, we've actually showed them on TV. A lot of times we've showed all of our, most of our lessons on TV. And so there's, there's plenty of ways that you can go and find out, like the king of, of Israel. You can go and find someone or get a, get a report to come back to you to see what it's like. Here's, here's a good example. Here's a good sample of what it's like under the tent uh, and how you'll be treated if you have a question. This, this, is, my, this is my point. Good Bible teaching, no doubt about it, but we're talking about, too, if you want to come and you want to have, ask a question. Here's, here's, here's a good example of this. This is John Shannon. This is from the Martinsville tent meeting a few years ago. Now, how can you prove that God said that to you? 
I really appreciate it. Amen. We bless you. Amen. Amen. Come here. Amen. I love you. I appreciate you. Amen. I appreciate you. Amen. And you know what? Uh, we want you to come up. We, I would like to study further with you. And I'd like for you, really, to kind of show us uh, when did this revelation take place with you when God told you this? When did, when did this happen? 2007. 2007, God gave you a revelation. Well, listen, we thank you. We come back. Thank you. Come back. All right, now, now, friends, let me just say this. Now, on this, on that particular instance, this man, he, he was, he's a preacher. He came up, so that's why I put him on TV. But if you want to ask a question, uh, we give, we can give you a microphone, and uh, you can sit out there in your seat. You know, this man wanted to walk up and get up on stage, and that was fine. But my point is. What you should realize is, if you come and see, you will see that we will treat you with respect. We'll treat your question with respect. If you behave yourself, if you behave yourself respectfully, we'll treat you respectfully. And so, this is, you know, this is this is what we're talking about. Come and see. There's there's plenty of examples about how our behavior is under the tent. You know, Paul said that in uh, in First Thessalonians. Uh, he was talking about how he was, how he behaved. And uh, notice this, in uh, 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 5, he says, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in as much assurance as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sakes. There's plenty of evidence about how, what kind of people we are. So what we're saying to you is, come and see. Come and see. All right, uh, Matt, go ahead and put the phone lines up if you would. Uh, and we'll move along. So, so come and see. Listen, if you if you have some idea or you have some, um, you know, doubts about the, the the tent meeting, you're not really sure you you want to come out. Plenty of evidence. Or find someone you trust. You know, find someone who's objective, who will tell you about the tent. You know, you you know what? Come out of the tent. You'll never. You may be surprised who you find out there. You know, you find someone who's who's. Objective, you know, someone who doesn't have any, you know, reason to misrepresent what's going on. Just hey, come on out to the tent, you know. Ask ask these people. So <clears throat> you might see someone you recognize. So come on out to the tent. Go and see, or go and see. Send somebody. Go and see. Now you don't want to come and see. You don't want to go and see. Well, if you find someone who's gone maybe they can come back and give you this report. Listen to this. In John chapter 4, in John chapter 4, there was a woman, and what she said was, come and see, or come see. In John chapter 4, in verse 29, now this is the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, and, uh, you know, she's talking to Jesus, and friends, I, I really encourage you, you read, go back and read John 4, and you'll find... G, uh, Jesus and this woman, they were having a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, uh, debate on the scriptures. You know, she was telling Jesus, well, you say this, and my father say this, and Jesus said, woman, you don't know what you're talking about. But she didn't get mad. She listened to him, okay? You're on the word from the Lord. Hi there. Hello. Uh, I have a question. Okay. I was in a discussion where I know that Stephen was stoned in the Bible. Yes, ma'am. But I was wondering what else um, you might know about someone being stoned in the Bible. Uh, what do you mean? Like, um... Uh... I know, I know in, in, you mean for like, for why, or like a reason why, or? Yeah, I heard a discussion of something that I hadn't heard before in the Bible, and it was something about uh, people being stoned. Um, I don't know exactly what all they were talking about, but well, I said, well, I 
need to ask a preacher but, about that. Cause well, I tried to look it up, but I I couldn't find anything. But where it's uh, well, that was that was a death sentence. That was the that was a death sentence, and uh, you know there was capital. It was a capital punishment. Didn't have the electric chair, right? Didn't have lethal injection, and so so what they did was they they were they stoned the people, the the the, the criminals, those who were uh, guilty of of crimes that were punishable by death. Now, uh, one example of this is in uh, Joshua. Uh, Joshua chapter 7, you know, uh, Achan, God told him not to take any of the spoils of Jericho, and Achan did. You know, he stole a gold and silver and a Babylonian garment, and he hid them. And then when he was found out, the, the, this is what the Bible says. Uh, uh, let's see, in, in Joshua uh, 22, 722, Joshua 722. So Joshua sent messengers, they ran into the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent and the, and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and to the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. Verse 24, And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and uh, his tent and all that he had. They brought them unto the valley of, of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned away from his fierceness of his anger. Uh, so because Achan disobeyed, they stoned him. Now, I don't know if that's really answering your question, but it was, it was a capital punishment. And that was... I do believe that's what they were talking about. Yeah, so it might have been, you know, we, they may have been discussing is capital, is it, is uh, capital punishment moral or something like that, and I, I believe it is. I mean, the Bible talks about the death penalty. Here's a good example of that. So, uh, you know, they were accusing Stephen of, of blaspheming, and so, you know, they had, they, they got people to, to lie about what he was... Uh, they got people to to lie about what he was saying, and so they uh -huh. they they stoned him there in Acts chapter seven. So m maybe that answers your question. It's in Acts. Acts chapter Joshua. Acts chapter seven is is Stephen. Okay. Acts chapter seven well, is. That's what I was looking right. up. But then all the other stuff they were talking about, I didn't know what they were talking about, and I tried to look it up. But it's in Joshua seven. Well, Joshua 7 is Achan, and Acts 7 is Stephen. Now, there, there'll be some other instances of people being stoned in the Bible, but I'm just saying that, that those are two that come to my mind. Uh, but it just has to do with a, a capital punishment. Okay? Okay, I appreciate that. All right. See how easy it is to get you. Thank you very much. All right, you're welcome. Thanks for watching. You see how easy it is to get your Bible question answered uh you know what it'd be it'd be that easy on the tent so so here you have you know this woman at the well now uh in josh in john chapter four so she and jesus are having having this discussion and uh, she goes back and she tells everybody in the city the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said unto the men come see a man which told me all things that ever i did is not this the Christ? And when they went out of the city and came to him, uh, then they went out of the city and came to him. Now, friends, this is, this is my point. Many people can tell you what our assemblies are like. You know, there's, there's quite a few people from the community that have come and visited with us on occasion, and they can tell you what our assemblies are like. And, you know, I, I think uh, most of those individuals would give you an honest report about about what it's like. And so here's a woman, the, the, the Samaritan woman, she goes back and she tells everybody, hey, you need to come see, you need to come see. Well, I hope that you have someone or you meet someone, you know someone who has been in our assemblies and can give you a first-hand report and will be honest about what, about what it was like because many people are going to lie about, about us, you know, just like they did Stephen, the lady called him by Stephen, they lied about Stephen in order to, uh, to, to kill him, have a reason to kill him. 
And I think a lot of people would lie about us, about the church of Christ, in order to make us look bad in the sight of the community. But you know what the Bible says in Acts 2, verse 47, that uh, uh, praising God and, fi and finding favor with all the people. I, I think that's really what, we're, what you'll find, is if you are looking for the truth, you're looking for individuals who are going to tell you the Bible, preach to you the Bible, show you something, an answer from the Bible, then we'll find favor in your eyes. And so here's, here's someone, or you need to find someone who can give you this honest report now and kind of answer all the naysayers. Now, this is a good example. This is from back in 2002. Here's a, here's a, here's a caller from 2002. This lady stopped by the tent. The tent was set up uh, there on the corner of, uh, across from SunTrust Bank, right down from the, the, uh, the speedway in Martinsville. And uh, I don't know, is that, is that Frith Lane or whatever, that big uh, uh, field right there on the hill. And she, she stops in, she calls in, and this is what she says. She's going to respond about people who have been talking about um, what we believe and what we teach and so forth. And, and just listen to her defense uh, about what she experienced, you might say. Two two five five, our number here on the program. Uh, we've been talking about a lot of different things at this point. You're on the air. Hey. Hello. I just thought I'd call and, and kind of look inform you of why they're calling in about him not being a Christian. No, was because I had called in earlier and said that I wanted to thank him and and kind of tell you know, people what happened to me. Uh, my father was in a was going to have be operated on and have his leg removed. He's he's got sugar and his foot has dried it off. And uh, I had went to see my father at the hospital the night before his operation, which was the day before yesterday. And they had revival. Huh? On my way home, I saw this tent, this big tent. And I was taking my mom back home, and I was so worried about my father because. He let that gangrene sit in his foot so long and hid it from us that he'd become very weak. He's old, and uh, I was very upset at the way he looked and thought maybe that he needed some prayer. And when I saw that tent, I had went by it. I didn't know who it was. And when I went by it, I went in and listened to him preach, and I was standing out in the rain listening. And when he got done, uh, uh, he asked me who I was, and I spoke up and asked the people and him if they would pray for my father and they did and it's caused a lot of controversy since I called in and some people said that he didn't believe in prayer I, I can tell you right now I don't go to church that much but every one of those people prayed for my father and what I said was the next morning before he was operated on he and several other ones came to the, to the hospital, didn't know my father. There was one that did know my father. But there were a lot of people from that church that came and prayed for my father. They didn't even know him. And I really appreciated that. And if the man didn't believe in prayer, I can tell you right now that I, they prayed in that church, I mean in that tent, for my father and for other people. So I don't, I don't believe these people that are saying he don't believe in prayer really know what they're talking about. I mean, I'm not upset, and I don't, I'm not a church goer. I do believe in church. I do believe in God, but I, I, I don't believe in speaking things that I don't really know about, which I know for a fact that he was praying, and his church was praying for my father, and I. I really appreciate a, a, a church. They didn't just pray. They took action. They came up to see my father. So they can't be all that bad is what I'm saying. And, and, and I've heard a lot of people say they didn't believe in healing. Well, if they don't believe in healing, then what did they come and pray for? And what did they pray for that night? I think people have construed maybe something has said and turned it the way they want to out of anger. I don't know why. I, I think maybe that because he, I hear him saying he's putting other churches down, and that may be why they kind of want to throw off on him. 
I, I really, I listened to him while I was waiting to speak and ask for help. And he preached. And <clears throat> in that preaching, he made a comment about um, somebody teaching things wrong. And he didn't complain about that. What I heard him say was their teachings was wrong according to what the Bible said. And he read something from the Bible and compared it to what uh, another, the way someone else was teaching. I, I think he's not personally throwing off on anybody from what I heard while I was waiting. I don't really know. I haven't been there enough to know. But I do know that what I heard him say was he was, some people preached not by the Bible. So I don't think, I think a lot of people are angry because it might be hitting home to them. That, that maybe their preachers or whatever are not teaching from the Bible. They're teaching sort of the way we want to live. I mean, this day and time, everybody knows, and I know enough that I have read the Bible, that a lot of us do not live like God intended us to live. And But I do know if these people are Christians, they shouldn't be calling in on this man throwing off on him and, and then in turn saying he's throwing off on the other ones. Isn't that the same thing? Certainly sounds like it. I certainly appreciate your call. I want to see what Thank some other you. folks have Bye -bye. to say. Okay, folks. So there, there's that was a good example. That's from 2002 of a lady that calls in and, you know, she just stopped by one, one evening and she's setting the record straight on what it was like to be under the tent and just, and really ask a question. She asked a question about you know, will you pray for my, my father? And so I want you to realize, friends, if you'll just come out and see, you'll just come out and examine, you know, the Church of Christ under the tent, it, it'll be a, uh, it may be an eye-opening experience for you just because you will uh, be disillusioned about all the, the things that you've heard about the Church of Christ. You know, we, will, we won't be probably anything like what you've heard unless you've heard someone who's actually been there and experienced uh uh, what it's like to sit through one of our assemblies, and if you're looking for the truth, then you can definitely say, hey, I've heard it for myself. So if, if that's what you're looking for, come out to the tent. Come out to the tent. Now, <clears throat> just have a, uh, we've got a, got a phone call, all right? You got a word from the Lord. Hello, Mr. Oldfield. How yep. are you, James? I'm, I'm very fine. How are you? Okay, well, you got, we got just about two oh, minutes. I, I, I don't wear makeup. I'm not trying to make up. And okay. my hair is not uh, colored by an artificial dye or uh, anything like that. I, I don't have any makeup, necklaces, pierced ears, and one man had four gold rings on each hand. Okay, let me, let me ask you. you let, all right. Sir, yeah. Sir, yeah, I'm, I'm wanting you to get to your you, question. I'll try to get to that. All right. Well, all right. Are, are you going to stay on the line? I, I don't have much time. As a matter of fact, let me answer your question off the air because I'm, I've got to wrap up. Will you stay on the line? She's already gone. Okay. Uh, well, the Bible talks about being modest, dressed modestly in modest apparel. Let's see if we can find this right quick. First Timothy. Now, I, what I want you to, I want you to know, uh, uh, friends, the Bible talks about modesty 
and it talks about uh, really not attra overly attracting yourself. You can be immodest by too much and by not enough clothes. The Bible says in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shame fastness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls. That's not talking about not wearing any kind of jewelry or it's not condemning you wearing jewelry at all. It's just saying make sure that it's not being overly attractive. You know, if you're, if you're wearing so much that it's attracting attention to you, that's immodest as much as it is not wearing anything at all. Friends, I'm out of time. I really wanted to get this last point, but I want to, I want to show you, and ma'am, if you want to call back after, I'll, I'll do more answering that question. Uh, but friends, I really hope you will come out to the tent. We really want to see you and hope that you will uh, take your time to visit us at the, at the, at the Eden Fairgrounds, September the 14th through the 25th. Uh, we're going every night, 7 p.m., no collections. Bring your questions, bring your friends, pastors, bishop, rabbis, and whoever. We'll be glad to see you and treat you like, like an old long-lost friend. Um, until next time, friends, thanks for watching. Remember, ask what does the Bible say? You always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. Views expressed on You're traveling through another dimension, a dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. Your next stop... Real Local.